Welcome to the channel. I don't always make videos on topics I want to. Very often, videos are made on topics popular on the internet. But today, after much thought, I decided to record a video about radio components. Some of them did not remain on the pages of history and were unjustly forgotten, but an entire generation grew up on them. And it is dedicated to that generation. My collection of radio components is quite large. I could talk about their history for hours. It contains more than a hundred unique radio components from the Soviet era and beyond. There are also components from the pre-war period, which are over 80 years old. But mostly these are passive components, resistors, and capacitors. Today, however, we will talk about more popular radio components. Some of them are unique by their release date, while others are a huge rarity these days. In the official group of the channel, there is a photo album where I upload photos with descriptions of various retro radio components. If you have interesting components or just devices that deserve attention, post their photos in our group and you can find the link to the group in the description. And now let's begin. Let's start, perhaps, from the end. Don't be surprised, but in front of you is a genuine transistor. It's unusual. It's rare. It's the first. A dinosaur in its own right. Transistor. P3V 1958. N. In 1958. Year of release. What makes it special is that it's one of the first lines of transistors released in the USSR. They were made simply to keep up with Western countries. In the Soviet Union, it was believed that transistors had no future. Vacuum tubes were in charge and transistors were trendy trinkets with very weak characteristics. And they were deeply mistaken. The transistor is 60 years old. It is completely new and in working condition. The only such specimen in my collection. And it came to me completely by chance. The transistor itself looks as follows. Everything around it is a heatsink. It is made based on a germanium crystal. In this state, that is, with the heatsink, it can dissipate up to one. What of power and up to more? What's if the transistor is additionally cooled? The parameters are quite modest. Here, as they say, size doesn't matter. It is adapted to work at frequencies up to 16 kHz, and the current gain is less than 10. By modern standards, this is, of course, laughable. And believe me, it was laughable, even 60 years ago when it was being developed. That's why it was believed that transistors had no chance of survival. We smoothly transition into the 1960s. It was during this period that these beautiful MP series transistors appeared. A uh, true legend. By then, it was understood that low-power transistors could quite well work in various equipment. In receivers, tape recorders, and other relatively portable technology. And not only that. They were also used in consumer electronics and in the military. Unlike vacuum tubes, they did not require high voltage for powering the anode circuits, nor was there a need for it. There was no need for a power supply for heating, as was the case with vacuum tubes. Naturally, transistors did not require warming up and were ready to work. Immediately after power was supplied to the circuit, they were compact in size and manufacturing them was much cheaper and easier. Transistors of this series are only found in a metal casing and their appearance is unmistakable. They were also built on the basis of germanium crystal with a maximum capability of a modest 200 milliwatts of power which was quite sufficient for receivers. They were produced in such large quantities that at that time in the USSR, there wouldn't be a person who hadn't seen or held such a transistor at least once in their life. This is truly an iconic line of transistors. I have a whole box of them lying around and used. Naturally, it's a shame to throw them away. There's nowhere to use them, so I'll keep them for future generations. In the 1960s, it became understood that transistors, in many respects, they were better than vacuum tubes, and there was a need to develop medium to high power transistors. There were a lot of such transistors. 
A striking example is the powerful germanium transistor P210. That's where it all began. Finally, a transistor was created that could compete with the best global models. The maximum collector current is a whole 12A. The power dissipation is 60W. The cutoff frequency is up to 100 kHz. This is really not bad, even by today's standards. They were implemented wherever possible. Power supplies, amplifiers. In general, wherever there was a need to switch powerful loads. Such transistors quickly became popular. After all, there was nothing more powerful in the Soviet Union. There wasn't until Soviet engineers, probably in a fit of excitement, decided to combine several such transistors in one package. Thus, the P208 transistor was born. And here, I'll make a small announcement. If anyone has such a transistor, maybe in old stock, would be happy to buy it or accept it as a gift. So write to the email and you can find the email link in the description below this video. This, guys, is a real monster. It's hard to imagine a larger transistor, but unfortunately, it was doomed from the start for a very simple reason. Inside, in theory, it has two germanium crystals from the P210 transistor, which we talked about a little earlier. They are connected in parallel. Considering the variability in the characteristics of radio components at that time, it turned out that the crystals were loaded. Oh, how unevenly. And eventually, one of the crystals would fail, and as a result, the transistor turned into scrap metal. But, since we're talking about semiconductors today, let's look at a few samples of diodes. In front of you now is the germanium diode DG-C1. It made our list not because of its popularity. According to my information, this is the very first mass-produced semiconductor diode made in the Soviet Union. There were other diodes in this line, but the C1 was the first. Such diodes are extremely rare now, especially the C1. This is a point contact germanium rectifier. That's how diodes were commonly referred to in the mid 20th century. The first diodes are older than the first transistors, and a modern person might naturally wonder where were they used. Such diodes, besides their primary purpose of rectifying alternating voltage, were used as detectors in radio receivers. The sample provided is from 1956. To appreciate its historical value, I should note that until 1953, the Soviet Union was unable to purify germanium to the level required for use in semiconductor devices and to establish mass production. But within a couple of years, everything changed drastically. However, at that time, there were more widely used and popular diodes. The range of germanium diodes from DGC-21 to DGC-21. This is a low-power germanium diode. The maximum allowable current through the crystal is no more than 100 mA. Such diodes, depending on the index, could be rated for reverse voltages from 50 to 400 V. These diodes were capable of operating at frequencies up to 50 kHz and became a useful innovation. Diodes from this range were durable, which is why they found wide application not only in consumer electronics. In a very short period of time, semiconductor rectifiers replaced tube ones. Yes, yes, don't be surprised, everything used to be on tubes, even the rectifier. And this diode is unique. It's a silicon diode that lived in the era of germanium giants. The D202 diode. And overall, this range is the first mass-produced silicon diode made in the indestructible union. The diode had quite decent parameters. The maximum current reached up to 400 milliamperes, but there was an option to mount it on a heatsink, thereby improving cooling. The maximum reverse voltage, depending on the index, reached up to 400 V. The era of silicon technologies had begun. Soon, they will completely displace germanium technologies. There is a lot of silicon in the world, and therefore, it is cheaper. Moreover, semiconductors based on silicon crystals are better in many parameters. For example, temperature. 
Germanium crystals have a greater temperature dependence, and as they heat up, their parameters could change drastically. Do you remember the line of iconic transistors? MP and how they were mega popular. In fact, in the socialist bloc, a transistor was produced, or rather, two of them, which in terms of popularity surpassed all previously created devices combined. And of course, we're talking about a living legend. The complementary low power pair KT315 and KT361. Despite their rather modest parameters, they are still popular today. There were simply an extremely large number of them. They were lying around every corner, even during the era of universal shortages. The collector current was only 50 milliamperes. They were designed to work in low voltage circuits. They could dissipate only 150 milliwatts of power, but they were incredibly cheap and easy to manufacture. Unlike the same MP, their casing was already plastic. Almost zero precious metal content. They were used in both consumer and military equipment. From receivers to televisions, amplifiers, tape recorders. And who knows where else? The traditional pair KT315-361, T315-360, looks as follows. Their color could vary. Orange, yellow, green. My samples are unique in their year of production and appearance. The first sample was produced in the late 60s, and the second in 1970. And now about the expensive one. Transistor, KP904. Unusual casing and appearance. My sample is for military equipment. This is a silicon field effect transistor from the early 80s. Their main purpose is to work in high frequency amplifier stages up to 400 megahertz. They can dissipate a colossal 75 watts of power. And what's so amazing about that, you might ask? Well, consider the fact that with just a few of these transistors, you can build an amplifier and connect it to a frequency hopping generator, effectively jamming all radio stations in the city. But consider that I never told you this. Doing such a thing could land you behind bars for many years, so don't even think in that direction. There's another remarkable thing about this transistor, gold. From 10 of these transistors, you can extract more than 1.5 grams of the purest gold, 99th grade, and as much as 5 grams of pure silver. That's why these transistors are currently in high demand and are scarce. In terms of precious metal content, they are in leading positions. Additionally, this transistor is dangerous because it uses beryllium ceramic. One of the members of our group told me about this, for which I am very grateful. Beryllium ceramic, or more precisely, beryllium dust, causes a severe lung disease. Brech. So, grinding and processing such materials is extremely dangerous, and it's better not to come into contact with this type of ceramic at all. But, beryllium ceramic is devilishly strong. Logan with his adamantium peacefully smokes on the sidelines. By the way, inside such a transistor, there are three crystals connected in series. Crystals, taken from smaller counterpart KP902. Well, let's wrap up our video with a review of these beauties. As a reminder that Soviet radio components can still compete with the best modern ones. The complementary pair KT827 and KT827. These are powerful transistors made using the Darlington configuration. In other words, composite. They have an extremely high current gain. Despite their high power, controlling such a transistor is very simple. The maximum collector current is a whole 20A. The maximum power dissipation is 125W. They can operate in fairly high voltage circuits with voltages up to 100 volts. Everything is built based on them. Output stages of amplifiers, low frequency, powerful power supplies, current loads, and much more. They are currently in demand due to their excellent characteristics. And most importantly, such transistors are a great investment because when you buy a KT827, you will never encounter a counterfeit, unlike with Chinese transistors. 
By the way, in the Soviet era, parameters were not exaggerated. The main drawback is their price. KT8, T825-827. You'll have to pay from 600 rubles. The military-grade version with the 2T index costs a bit more. However, it all depends on who you're buying from. At flea markets, you can dig them up for a couple of dozen rubles. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. I won't say any unnecessary words, just if you want to see more, leave a review. Wishing you many years and good health. And as always, this was Kazya Naka with you, until we meet again. Goodbye.